The Kickstarter campaign was just funded for a device called the 4K Gamer Pro that claims to scale 1080p game consoles to 4K with no lag and no frame drops. I'll be honest, when I first saw this device, I had my doubts, but after trying it myself, I really think it might be a good option for both modern and some retro gamers as well. Let's take a look. Let's start with an unboxing and disclaimers at the same time. First, after seeing the Kickstarter, I reached out to the company making this device to get a review copy, but this video is in no way sponsored by 4K Gamer Pro, and I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I was just curious how this device would work and wanted to check it out myself. If you don't believe me or think I'm easily skewed, I have 10 years of honest reviews to prove my integrity, so please check those out if you have any doubts. Now that it's out of the box, the first thing I'm noticing is the HDMI plug end goes to the target device like similar products. It always seemed more intuitive to have that end be the output, but they do bundle a short HDMI extension cable with it, making this a non-issue for Nintendo Switch owners or anybody else who has an HDMI port on a device that's kind of hard to get to. Other than that, it's just got a USB-C port for power and a button that cycles through its three modes plus bypass. That's about all there is to show on the hardware, so let's start testing. Okay, before we do anything else in this review, let's test this thing for lag, because if this turns out to be a slow, variable latency device like so much other garbage on the market, then it's not even really worth doing anything else in the review. Also, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be compatible with either the Time Sleuth or the Leo Bodnar device, but that's okay. I have an old school method I used to use that is a surefire way to prove whether this does or does not have lag. Here's a test setup that safely splits analog output from a Sega Nomad to both an RGB monitor and RetroTINK 5X that's connected to the same low lag 4K PC monitor I've showed in previous videos. Any delay shown on the flat panel is lag added over the original analog setup into a CRT. Here's the same thing but with a thousand frame per second camera. Pay attention to both the numbers as well as the sides of the image. Notice the CRT's electron beam passing over the number as it changes. Then on the flat panel, you see both the number and sides of the image change just about the same time the CRT's beam has drawn half the image. And that's exactly what I'd expect with this setup based on previous measurements. The RetroTINK 5X in frame lock mode adds about 3 milliseconds of latency over a CRT, and so does the monitor, which is just under half a frame of lag. So that's our baseline measurement. Any further lag added to the signal would be a result of any change to the setup, which is what we're looking for next. Oh, and if you have any questions about my test methods and accuracy of my measurements, please check out the many other videos I have on this subject. Don't just take my word for it, please see for yourself. Okay, now let's try the 4K Gamer Pro in pass-through mode. As expected, it's exactly the same as when it's unplugged. You see the numbers on the flat panel changing at the exact same time, making it a true bypass. After turning on the first mode, it's also the same, which is literally zero lag added. Same with the medium mode, and same with the highest setting. I double and triple checked the settings to make sure this was right. My monitor was showing a 4K input signal, so the 4K Gamer Pro was absolutely working. Also, the lag doesn't appear to change between frames, so even if it is occasionally buffering a few lines, that would equal a few milliseconds of lag, if anything at all. So here's your proof. This is without a doubt a zero lag device. With a device like this, lag isn't the only potential issue. We'll want to double check their claims that this does not compress any colors and does not drop any frames that are being passed through. Here's my camera set to 4K60 aimed at the RetroTINK 5X plugged directly into my PC monitor. If we slow it down, you can see every frame is being recorded as the counter is showing every number. And now here's the 4K Gamer Pro at its highest setting, also showing every frame. And for the record, it's a bit blurred simply because my camera must have started recording between frames, but since no numbers are being skipped here, that's pretty good proof it's not dropping any frames at all. And for the record, this is what frame drops would look like in this scenario. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong SSD for my computer and I get hard drive frame drops whenever I'm recording at 4K60 lossless. 
This is not the 4K Gamer Pro though. This is just a visual example of what frame drops would look like in these tests and more proof that why the previous video I showed demonstrates that the 4K Gamer Pro doesn't drop frames. Lastly, I ran my PC through a color checking pattern that Fudo shared with me a while back, and you could see both pictures look the same. That means the device is not compressing the full range of colors being sent to it. If it did compress the colors, the pattern would look something like this. And to be clear, this is not the 4K Gamer Pro I'm showing. This is just an example of what color compression would look like when using this pattern. So that's proof that all of the claims on the 4K Gamer Pro's Kickstarter are true. This is a zero lag device that doesn't compress colors or drop frames. Okay, so all of that was well over a day's worth of work just to prove that their marketing was correct, but I really felt like it was essential to this review because without doing all of that, how would you really know that it wasn't a laggy frame dropping device? So now that we've proved that it isn't, that their marketing is correct, I wanna try to do some analysis to see what exactly it's doing to the image. In order to try to figure out what each setting is doing, I wanted to use Super Nintendo graphics via a mister outputting 1080p, of course, because that's the only input resolution that it's compatible with. But I really think that the low resolution graphics might be a help in analyzing what exactly the device is trying to do. Here's my typical link shot that I nearest neighbor scaled in Photoshop from 1080p 5x to 12 times its original size in order to bring link front and center in this picture. This is basically the perfect scenario for 2D retro graphics, as it's super clean and doesn't alter the image in any way. In contrast, here's the same 12x scale, but done similar to how your TV might scale it. I'm showing these images as an example of what to expect when sharp versus soft scaling. Now, here's the 4K Gamer Pro in its low setting, scaled to 6x to match the size of the other screenshots. It's definitely retaining some sharpness, but there's a ringing that almost looked like chroma subsampling. I think this is simply a result of not being designed for older 2D graphics, so let's move on. Medium mode looks better with these graphics, and you can see the changes around each color are definitely deliberate. This is not color compression that you're seeing. You can tell this was definitely made for more 3D graphics, and we'll test those in a second. Now, here's the highest setting, which makes what they're doing a bit more obvious. It seems like their nearest neighbor scaling, but also creating something like a reflective border around each color. I feel like the goal is to give a sense of depth to the image. Kind of like a square versus a cube? Yeah, that's probably not the right way to describe it at all. Here's a screenshot of how their marketing presents how they do the scaling, and I'll leave it up to you to figure it out exactly what's going on here. Now let's check it out with early 3D graphics. I'm sticking with the mister and switching over to the PlayStation Core for this one. I have both dithering and the texture filter turned off and I enabled the 16 by nine mode just to give us some more background. As you can see, this doesn't stretch the image at all though. Like with last time, each mode increase makes the image sharper, but unlike with 2D graphics, I'm not sure I like the look. I truly think early 3D graphics benefit from smoothing like the RetroTink products provide, as opposed to the sharpening we're all used to. I mean, these were all really designed to take advantage of CRTs and composite video blending to smooth out the graphics anyway, so in most cases, sharpening is the opposite of what you'd want to do with 3D graphics games from that era. Oh, and just for comparison, here's the M Classic with the same shot, scaling the image to 1440p. In all the hours of testing I've spent with the M cable, I could honestly say it does nothing for pre-HD games. So many people argue otherwise, but I think they're just convincing themselves they didn't waste their money when they bought it. Anyway, now let's take a look at the product that this was actually marketed for, the Nintendo Switch. As you can see, the differences aren't as easy to spot in these screenshots, which is why I wanted to start with the lower resolution consoles. You can definitely see what the 4K Gamer Pro is trying to accomplish though, and its effects blend into the image nicely with the higher resolution graphics. In contrast, check out the M cable as that essentially does the opposite. It blends the edges together as it upscales to 1440p. You'll really need to see it in action to decide which you prefer, if either, so let's take a look. So in order to provide these examples, I had to make a decision. As I showed before, my capture rig isn't quite finished. 
and in its current state, I can't get true uncompressed 4K60 captures, which means that if I used that method, there would be some kind of compression applied even before it was rendered and sent up to video sharing services, which could skew the results. So I decided to use a different method that I might have ended up using anyway, which is to aim a 4K60 camera at your average budget-priced 4K TV. And the reason that I wanted to choose this method was not just for the capture rig, but also because a lot of what you see in these comparison shots will depend on how your TV scales the 1080p image to 4K. So if I were to do that on a PC, it would rely on whatever my software scaling that I chose would be, whereas doing it this way would give you a true example of what it would look like on your flat panel. So let's take a look. Let's start with Breath of the Wild again, as those shots are probably fresh in our minds from before. Here it is connected directly without the 4K Gamer Pro plugged in at all. Now here's the 4K Gamer Pro in the highest setting. I don't think I'll be showing low or medium in these examples because that preference is really going to be up to you. I figured I'd just show the most pronounced example so you'll know exactly what to expect. Here's the M cable again just to give you another perspective of what could be done to the image. Note that the TV will still have to scale the M cable to 4K as the M cable maxes out at 1440p60. Here's all three side by side so you can see them together. To me, this is pretty simple. The M cable smooths the image and the 4K Gamer Pro sharpens it with the perception of detail added. Let's check out Virtua Racing, which should be interesting due to its polygon graphics. Here's the switch directly into the TV, outputting 1080p. Now, here's the 4K Gamer Pro, which doesn't seem to do too much to these odd graphics, but it definitely seems a bit sharper. And now here's the M cable. I'm shocked I'm saying this, but I kind of like how it smooths out the jagged edges on the car. I honestly think both look cool, but preference is going to be up to you. There's no wrong answer with stuff like this, it's just whichever your eyes prefer. Here's Link's Awakening, once again showing the difference between smooth and sharp scaling. It's also interesting to see how these graphics look in combination with the TV's built-in scaler. I think I prefer the 4K Gamer Pro here, though, as I get the sense these graphics are supposed to remain sharp. So, how about a new retro game like Sonic Mania? This looks good with the TV scaler, but holy crap, this looks great with the 4K Gamer Pro. This really does a good job with 2D graphics, and I'd be willing to bet all modern retro games would benefit. Oh, and for the record, here's how the M cable looks. I would never recommend using this for 2D graphics, as images like this are definitely not meant to be smoothed out. So this got me thinking, if the 4K Gamer Pro looked this good with Sonic Mania, how good would it look with the original Sonic games? Here's the Mister set to 1080p 5x, which looks great on its own. But now here it is through the 4K Gamer Pro set to high. I'm really impressed with the sharp scaling. I wish they had just a regular nearest neighbor mode I could toggle to see if it's the effect I'm enjoying or simply the sharp scale to 4K. Either way, I really like this though, and I'm very impressed at how it looks. Now let's check out Super Mario 3 just to see how it looks with 8-bit graphics. I can't really see the effect it's applying, but I'm loving the sharp scale to 4K. I wanted to check out one more experiment. Here's the RetroTINK 5X with the Super Nintendo running in 1080p over with optimal timings. Looks great, but it looks even better with a 4K Gamer Pro enabled in high. I'm curious though, how does this thing scale scan lines? Here's my favorite combination of scan lines that I recently played through Super Metroid with on my OLED. While I'm sure video compression or the screen you're watching on will make this an inaccurate example, I think they looked great in person. The 4K Gamer Pro didn't seem to distort the scan lines at all, and everything looks the same, just sharper. I really didn't expect this to look so good with pre-HD games, but I'm impressed. It's totally up to you to decide if you like the look, and I'm sure it'll differ between games, but at least you'll know this device doesn't add any lag, so it's totally safe for retro and modern games. So far, this whole video has either been positive or neutral, so I wanted to talk about some of the things I either didn't like about it or thought it could be improved. And the first one is definitely compatibility, because while it's not compatible with the OSSC, that's totally normal as many devices are not. But I'm not talking about weird retro gaming adapters. 
I had this thing not work with some PCs, but work with others, which didn't really make any sense. At first, it didn't work at all with the Mr. FPGA project, but I spoke to Mr. Dev Wickerwaka, and they were able to get it working by switching the HDMI sync polarity. That's a huge deal for Mr. users, as you might just need a few minor adjustments in order to get it working with this device. I also spoke to Christoph from the TimeSleuth team, and he said their 1080p output is exactly as described in the CEA 861D spec, so I have no idea why that wouldn't work with it. Compatibility was the only thing I would call a complaint, but there were a few other things that I think could be improved. And the first is that if you send this device any resolution that's not 1080p, it'll just pass it through in any of the modes, which is both a good thing as you could still get a display on your screen, but it's bad because how would you know it wasn't working unless you thought to check your input and output signals? So I guess that's just a reminder that if you wanna make sure this thing is working at its best, set whatever console or device you're using to 1080p and then just check on your display's info button to make sure that it's actually receiving 4k. And the only other thing that I think could be improved is if this device is sharp scaling anyway, I really, really wish they would at least consider adding a fourth mode, which would just be a basic nearest neighbor integer scale from 1080p to 4k. I think that might be a better help with some games that might not look as well with their highest setting mode. I didn't check hundreds of games, so I imagine that a bunch of people might find the effect really awesome and others might not. So just having that alternative would be really cool. And that would also guarantee they'd get a heck of a lot more sales from the retro gaming crowd, as anybody with a retro tank 5X or a mister would definitely be interested. So let's hope they at least consider that in a future firmware update, because it shouldn't be too hard if they've already done all of this work to get the device where it is now. But that's pretty much it. Not really too many things to say that are negative or could be improved. So that's pretty much it. The 4K Gamer Pro doesn't compress the colors at all, doesn't drop frames, and most importantly does not add any lag. So anything else about it is going to be totally preference based. Do you want a sharp scale of your 1080p images, or do you want a soft scale, or do you want to just leave it up to your TV? There's really no wrong answer. I'm just really happy that there's now an option for sharp scaling, even if it isn't the exact nearest neighbor option that all retro gamers would have wanted. It's still cool, and hey, in some scenarios, maybe you might even think it's better. Well, that's it for this time. If you liked this video, please consider supporting the channel in any way possible, whether it's monthly support services or just buying the same products that you might buy on Amazon or eBay anyway, but using our affiliate click-through links to get it at the same price, but we get a few pennies on the dollar. So any help you could provide is very much appreciated. And if not, hey, at least spread the word and hopefully we could help grow the channel. That's it for this time though. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.